Hello everybody, and today's repair job is two Williams CPU boards from Pinball Machines. These are WPC89 boards. Uh, one's in very good condition, and one's in pretty poor condition, it's got a lot of corrosion damage. I'm just going to switch to macro mode so you can see. Okay, so it looks like the batteries have leaked at some point, as you can see, lots of corrosion on there. And it hasn't been cleaned up, so basically someone's tried to repair it, which is this I see here. But they've never cleaned up the damage, so we've got some fairly heavy corrosion along here. Look at those green and black legs. There's corrosion around here. These are really bad here. Look at the state of those. Barely any legs left on them. And also these logic ICs here. These are a bit green. And not so sure these aren't too bad. Definitely have to replace all of this area here. And this one that's been replaced, if you can see or not, but it's actually green inside the socket. That's absolutely ruined. Then if you look at the, uh, the soldering job that's been done on this, what the fudge? Look at that. That's awful soldering. That's some of the worst I've seen. <laughs> What's going on? Like two blobs are burning, one hole hasn't been filled in, and a big smudge of flux. So uh, let's get that off. Take all the damaged areas off and get it neutralised, sand it down to remove the corrosion and then we'll put new sockets on any other new components need replacing. Uh, this one, I'll power it up and then uh, do some diagnosis, but this one's in fairly good condition, but it's, I believe it's been short, had a coil shorted into the switch matrix, so we've probably got some damage around here. Um, right, let's, uh, well, we'll start with getting this one stripped down first and then we'll do some testing on that while this is soaking. Okay, and that's the worst affected components removed, including the battery hole that's got big blobs of corrosion underneath. Look at the horrible state the pads and tracks are in on this side. That I see there, that was socketed, that is awful. Look at that, there's no pads. All the pads are missing, that's why it looks so terribly soldered. Oh, this is going to take some patching up to repair that, I'm going to have to clean all this off. Uh, so I've got to neutralise the board, so we've got to get all this corrosion off, neutralise it, rinse it a few times with isopropyl. And start fitting sockets on and then patching up all these bad tracks and uh, damaged pads here. Okay, so phase one is complete, all the corroded IC has been removed, and I've painstakingly cleaned every resistor leg with a fiberglass pen. And as you can see, we've got a lot of uh, pad and track damage from the corrosion, as especially around this area, it's very heavy. Um, next step is basically to uh, Neutralise this in a mildly acidic solution. Uh, and once that's dry, we'll then rinse it off with some isopropyl. We'll clean up all this horrible flux, and then we'll start uh, fitting new sockets and then patching up all these damaged tracks, especially around this horrible IC here. I don't know what flux was used or what solder was used on that IC there because it actually jammed up my desoldering iron. It clogged up the tip. It was really hard to get out. It's like a gooey, horrible slime. Um, yeah, no idea. That's definitely not electronic solder anyway. Right, let's uh, carry on. Okay, we're just cleaning up now with the final isopropyl rinse, and then we need that to dry. Okay, and this is where that socket was after cleaning up. As you can see, almost all the pads are missing. That's why the soldering job looks so bad, because there were no pads to actually solder into, well, apart from two or three. And these tracks here are all over the place, so I'll have to clean all this up. Now, because of the poor condition of the pads, uh, I'm going to use turn pin sockets. And the reason is uh, the solder will basically attach from both the top and bottom of the pin fairly easily because it's all metal. There's a greater surface area, so we're more likely to get a more reliable contact. Uh, anywhere where there's broken pads and pit and uh, tracks, I'm going to basically patch up with some nylon wire on the back. Um, yeah, it's a shame that. This has got so corroded that it's eaten through so many of the pads. Okay, and that's all the sockets soldered in place. And again, I've cleaned it down with some isopropyl alcohol. Just waiting for that to dry. Um, I've not done too bad a job of these uh, pads. There are quite a few missing or in bad condition, but they seem, the soldering seems to have gone fairly well. Nice clean joints. Apart from this IC here, as I say, it's all a bit burnt and horrid so I need to do some repair work on that where that socket was uh, and there you go there's the top view of the sockets oops on the macro so you can't see it from far away and 
yeah, so it's to repopulate it with some ICs. Um, I've taken out the ASIC chip just to make sure these pins are all clean in good condition. Um, yeah, I'll get a test ROM in here and we'll see what it does. Also, I'll get my meter and trace out all the connections, make sure there's no broken traces between any of these. There's probably going to be a few, I think. I said there was some, where was it? I think it was these two that had the really heavy corrosion, wasn't it? Um, oh, the ICs have removed are all over here. I'll just have a look at these before we throw them out. So, there you go, look. See, the corrosion's got into the back of it, it's actually started eating away at the casing. That's a really bad one, that one. So, bin. All of these are for the bin. There's another, there you go, it's a nice green one. Um, another one, and the legs started coming off on that one. There you go, look at that. It's pretty heavily corroded. Uh, another one that's heavily corroded. That's another green one. Yeah, I'll just chuck all them in a bin. There's that socket, look at the socket. That was in terrible condition. It's really green in that side. Right, so while we're waiting for the other board to dry, let's take a look at this one. This one's in fairly good condition, as I mentioned before. I've just hooked it up to one of my power spiders for testing boards. And we'll just fire it up and see what happens. Okay, so that's booted successfully and that's running okay. So what I'm just going to do now is I'm going to basically check these outputs here, the switch drives to make sure they're actually driving and hopefully we should identify what's wrong. Um, I suspect, oh, I can see a burnt resistor there for a start, um, but it's probably likely going to be this ULN is also dead. Um, but we'll, yeah, we'll do some testing now and see what's working. Right, so we are looking at the column drives, which is provided by the ULN2803. Now, I've already just done this quickly, but column 1 is fine, column 2 is dead, column 3 is dead, column 4 is dead, 5 is fine, 6 is fine, 7 is fine, 8 is fine. So yeah, as I suspected, I think we've got a dead ULN here and this resistor here. I'm going to have to test, we'll test all these resistors in this bank of 8 here and these uh, capacitors here as well go to the ground line and it's potentially going to be a dead capacitor or two as well I'd have thought. And just as a demonstration that an IC can be removed whole completely cleanly without damaging any tracks or burning anything. Uh, I'm going to remo I've removed that using my Metcal soldering equipment and there you go. I managed to clear all the pads nice and cleanly with no burning, no damage to tracks, no scratching. And as that's been done cleanly, see the IC should come out with absolutely no trouble at all. There we go, just a bit of light pressure to lift it. There you go, that's how you remove an IC perfectly. Um, that's a new socket fitted and after doing so, even though I'm using no clean solder, I actually like to just clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol and a nylon brush just to remove any flux residue and then afterwards we should get a really nice clean finish that looks almost identical to the factory finish. Well, there's only the one bad resistor it seems and there are no bad capacitors. I've replaced the 2803 and the next job basically is to test that that's working and then we'll start testing the switch rows. Right, column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4, column 5, 6, 7, and 8. So all column drives are now working. And to test the rows, I've basically hooked up my pulser. So I'm going to be putting pulses into the switch row inputs. And then I'm going to be reading the outputs of the 339 comparisons to make sure they match. And they all tested good, so I think this is ready for testing in a machine. Okay, so with the corrosion board we've replaced uh, an LS374, an LS240, four LM339s, which are there, there and there, and a 2803. And then I've basically replaced the clearly burnt tracks uh, with nylon wire links, where it uh, dooms neatly and short as possible. Uh, I don't know if that's all the broken tracks, I've just got it into a state where hopefully I can actually power it up and test it and we'll see if there's anything else that needs doing to this. Right, I've just done a quick test and column drives 4 and 5 are stuck low. So I've turned it off quickly, I don't want to risk damaging anything, I'm just going to investigate why they're stuck low. Is there a short or is that not driving? Let's have a look. 
Right, so we've got static lines basically compared to that's a working line, there's a static line on four and five. So I think it's uh, going back to this 374, so we need to see what's happening here. If we've got an output from the 374, and the output from the 374 is static on two, and let's look at 19, and that's also static. So we need now to look at the input side of the 374. And so again, on the input side of the 374, we've got a static line on, on pin 3, and pin 18 is nothing, floating. So, potentially a break or something further up the chain. I'll just check the schematics to see where that goes uh, after the 374. I think it goes straight onto the data bus now, so I need to check if the data bus is okay. Okay, and I've had to add three more wire links to deal with breaks in the data lines, and we'll give it another try. Okay, and that's column drives four and number five fixed. So now that we've done all that, we need to put some pulses into the inputs on the switch rows and make sure they're getting all the way through the board. So I found there's a small issue here. So pins 13 and 14, which should be low, are actually high. So pulsing the corresponding switch row doesn't actually do anything. That's a brand new comparator. It could be faulty, so what I'm going to do is swap it over and see if the fault follows the chip or stays with this current socket. Right, so that's the chip swapped over, and we've still got the low signal problem with this socket here. So we'll have to investigate if we've got any more broken tracks. It wouldn't be surprising if we have, but this was in the high corrosion area here. So let's have one further look. Okay, I've managed to resolve that switch row problem. There were a couple more track breaks, which I've just now bridged, and that's now working. At least it's appearing to work fine on the bench. Okay, and the last job I've done with this board now, after I've tested it, is I've fitted some uh, two foot of wire so that the customer can install a remote battery holder if they so wish. So they basically just need to uh, attach it to these two wires. Um, so yeah. All done. I mean, it's not particularly pretty. I've got a few more wire links I'd like to see, but the wire links are going to be more reliable than the corroded tracks that were on on this side. Um, I mean, the, the customer reported this was an intermittent had intermittent faults on the switch matrix. And I say I guess it's all down to the heavy corrosion around this area. So uh, some good solid wire links between these points should hopefully resolve all that. And we've got let's say got rid of all the corroded ICs and. This should be ready to go. Okay, so we're just giving this board a full play test now. Uh, this is the non corroded CPU board. Now I've already gone through all the matrix test in test mode, and I'm just giving it a play test to make sure everything's working as expected in game. Okay, and this time we've got the corroded CPU board in for testing. You can see that's one with the battery wires on it. And that seems to be working all fine. I can hit every switch. I've done the switch matrix test. All the lights are working, solenoids are all working. So I can't see any issues with that now. 